Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video I wanted to kind of start talking more about texturing and UVs and what all that means. Texturing is a huge topic. Uh, if you'll see here under, I'm in the modeling menu set and I have the UV menu here. And I break this off like so. There's lots of stuff in here. It kind of uh, goes past the edge of my recording screen here. But we have our UV editor, which is a core tool when dealing with textures. But then we have all these different UV related uh, tools and commands. All kinds of stuff. Uh, it'd be way too much to go over in one video. Probably more than enough to go over in 10 videos. Uh, but I wanted to try and start talking more about UVs and texturing because I know a lot of you have uh, requested such things. Well, first, let's look at our UV editor. This first one up here at the top, click it, and I'll just close this UV menu now. So this is the UV editor as it is in Maya 2016. They've actually changed it a little bit. You see all these little bright green bracketed commands up here? The green brackets indicate something that's new in Maya 2016. Uh, some of these are just uh, changes made to previous uh, UV editor tools that I am familiar with and other things are brand new. But anyway, there's a lot here. This is the UV editor and there's a lot within just the UV editor to go over. Uh, so it's a hard subject matter to tackle. If I zoom out here with my UV uh, editor, you can see more of what it actually looks like. It's this kind of uh, grid with these four major quadrants. Uh, typically, the only quadrant you really want to worry about is in the upper right quadrant. This is positive X and positive Y. When you get into negative uh, values in UVs, typically they don't necessarily work as well. Usually when you have a texture applied to an object, it gets applied within the positive quadrant, positive Y and positive X here in this positive area. And textures then start repeating beyond that. Any, anywhere within the negative zones or beyond positive one and in the X and Y directions within the UV editor, the texture you apply starts repeating. Okay? And I'll get more into how all that works in a minute. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, just trying to uh, convey how much information there is to convey <laughs> when it comes to uh, textures and UVs. So in this first kind of stab at it, I wanted to just do a kind of an introduction to textures and UVs and how they work in a nutshell. And then as we go forward, we'll start making more tool and command specific videos going over different aspects of using UVs and texturing objects. Does that make sense? Hope so. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go to the sculpting tab here. And over here on the right, let's see, we have open visor for sculpting base meshes. I think this is a good way of just importing an object into your scene if you don't have one already. So I'll let this open. And here my visor, and the visor is, is pretty much just like a um, gallery of different things. In this case, we're looking at sculpting base meshes. And then over here we have lots of folders with different categories. So we have like a T-Rex, and a cat, and a fish, and an alligator. And if we open the bipeds, you'll see we have lots of people. Here's a head, and a hand, and so forth, and so on. So I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, this is like a Wolfman. So I'll right click on the Wolfman and say import Maya file monster Wolfman. So I'll do that. So now you see it's in my scene, so I'll close my visor and I'll zoom out here so we can see it. This is this guy here. So this is a base mesh that Maya provides for the purposes of sculpting, like with ZBrush and such. Now if I go to my UV editor, if I go to UV, UV editor here, you can see how this model has its UVs laid out. So the models provided by Maya have been pre-laid out with their UVs. They've already been done for you, which is handy. So you can see how they've done it and maybe learn what you would do for your own projects. One easy way to kind of see both of these, if I go to my camera presets here, we have different options here, such as perspective with the outliner or hypershade and perspective. So I'm just going to right click on one of these and choose perspective UV editor right here. So that gives me a side-by-side -side window with the perspective on my left and the UV editor here on my right. 
So now I can zoom in and see my mesh and my UVs right here. What are UVs? UVs are texture coordinates and an easy way to kind of get the correlation is if you look down here in my lower left corner of the perspective view we have my X, Y, Z gizmo here. We have X direction, Y direction, and Z direction to indicate a 3D space. Any point with an X, Y, and Z coordinate can be pinpointed within a 3D uh, volume of space, right? In order to uh, specify a point on a 3D shape, they call them UVWs or UVs for short because textures are typically two-dimensional things. We don't usually say W when we say UVW because we don't typically have 3D textures. There are such thing as 3D textures, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, so we usually just say UVs for short because we're dealing with two-dimensional coordinates on a three-dimensional object. So here on the right side we have our 2D image of the 3D mesh. So if I were to right click on my Wolfman here and choose Vertex as my component selection mode, I can highlight over a point and over there in the UV editor you can see those the point that I'm highlighting is also highlighted. So you can see where in the UV editor the point that I'm looking at shows up. So you see here this general area is the chest. So right here this is the chest of the Wolfman and as we look at the shape of the geometry we can kind of start practicing identifying uh, the shapes with our model. You can see here how the legs stretch down. So in the UV editor here, where this is our chest, our torso, and our groin area, they split apart here for the legs. And they also wrap around to the back of the legs through here. So what we're seeing here is this mesh split apart and laid out flat. That's what we're looking at these holes here on the left and right side of the torso are the holes for the arms. If I start highlighting arm UVs, you'll see that they are separated down here in their own areas. If we highlight the head, you can see I have two different sections for the head that has been split in half. So I have the uh, left side of the head if you're looking at the, from the wolf's perspective anyway. Left side of the head right here and the nostrils are this area of this UV shell. And that's what all these little segments of, or these sections of UVs are called, are UV shells. So as I mouse over these points, you can see them highlighted. You can see where the ears are, so the ears kind of converge into these points here. So what happens when you select, say, this point in the middle? Let me zoom back out again so you can see both halves of the head that they have here. So when I highlight this point, you'll see I have two points on the UV editor highlighted. Those two points are the same point. If I move the vertice here, it will affect both of those both of those UVs within the UV editor. Now it won't affect them in, in the sense of positioning. I can move these points around in my scenes. If I grab, say, the, this uh, side of the wolf's head, you can see them highlight in the UV editor again. And if I get my move tool and start moving them, you know, really messing up this guy's face, the UVs do not move in the same way. I have them selected, I have the move tool selected, I'm moving them over here in 3D space, but they're not moving in the UV editor. That's because we're not dealing with vertices in the UV editor, we're dealing with UVs. UVs are an entirely separate component type. We have vertices for this model that we're moving around to get our shape the way it is. If I right click and choose UV, and we can choose a UV or a UV shell, but if I choose UV, you can see how the points on my model now are highlighted in kind of a different color, not purple anymore, but kind of a brownish color, and I can select them, and you can see them highlight over here in the UV editor, and I have my move tool active but I no longer have the move tool in my scene to actually move these points around like I would with vertices because now we're dealing with texture coordinates. Now we can move UVs over here in the UV editor. I can select a UV point and move them. You can see here I'm moving them within the UV editor, moving these points around, but you'll notice here on the model they are not moving. So there is a separation between UV points 
in their positionings versus vertices or vertex points or 3D points or however you want to call that and their positioning. So when you're first getting started with UVs, you have to kind of get that separation in your mind that moving vertices will not move UVs and vice versa. Let me undo all that. So what do all these points do then if you can't model with them? <laughs> well, let me uh, grab my Wolfman here. I'm going to assign a texture to him. I'm going to right click on him way down beyond my recording screen. Let me uh, actually zoom out here. Put him up here and right click. So I'm going to say assign new material. And I'm just going to choose a Lambert. Doesn't really matter too much. And then for the Lambert I'm going to go to the color attribute and click the map button. This little black and white checkerboard. And I'll actually use a checker texture I believe like so. And I'll close the attribute editor and press the 6 key to enter texture view. So now you can see my checkerboard pattern on the Wolfman. If I select the Wolfman you'll see here in the UV editor that checkerboard pattern is very clearly laid out. And depending on how these points are laid out on this checkerboard pattern, that is how the checkerboard pattern is revealed on the mesh. For example, if we look at the two halves of his head here, you'll see this half is black for the most part. This half is white. It's kind of actually reversed, where the this ear is black, this ear is white, and so forth and so on. And if we look at the head UV shell here, this is the part of the head that we're looking at here. This is the points where that ear converges and it's within this black cell of the checkerboard pattern. The nostrils or the snout of the wolfman are up here. They all are up here. This is where we're looking at here. This is the nostrils of the wolfman. And so if you look at it from this angle, you can kind of see that line of the, the checkerboard pattern being displayed here on the mesh right through here. So this black cube is right here on the mesh, right here, and right here on the mesh, and so forth. So once you look at it at the right angle, you can kind of see how the layout of the UVs affects the texture on the mesh and how it looks. And so vice versa for the other side. Since this side is over here, we can select these UVs and get the same kind of result. The snout is here in this black checker. So here it is in the model. It's all colored black. The ears all converge here within this white checker. So that you're here on the model, the ears are white. And if I were to move this shell, you can see how the texture changes. Because I'm moving the UV shell around the checkerboard, where these points match with these points, and where they are on this image makes that image change on the model. Hopefully this makes sense and you're, and you're able to correlate what's going on with, uh, with, with what's happening. So this is dealing with a checkerboard pattern, obviously not something that we would actually want to do with a Wolfman. We want to have you know the skin and the face and eyes and everything all textured properly. But you can kind of see what you would have to do then. You would need to make your texture I can uh, hide the image with this button right here. So with your UVs all laid out like this, you then would need to take your texture and make it match your UV layout so that the tail, for example, which is what these two pieces are, that whatever you want the tail to look like, you have it drawn on your texture right here in this area. So then when you lay it within this quadrant, it lays on top of your UVs just the way you want. And then you can obviously go in here and adjust your UV placement if you're a little off. You can fiddle around with these little points and change the positions. So the way that you actually lay these UVs out, we'll get into, I think, in our next part. I wanted to just kind of have an introduction to UVs and how they re relate with textures and models and how that relationship works. Hopefully I've been able to uh, convey that properly here and you can see that correlation between UV coordinates and the positions of textures on a model in this way. You can expect more UV uh, centric and texture centric videos in the future. I'm going to try and focus on that for a little bit and get more of that kind of content on the channel. But if you do have requests for uh, specific things about UVs or textures, please feel free to let me know so I can kind of know what you guys are interested in seeing next in this kind of topic. 
Uh, but if you have uh, questions about other things as well, when it comes to modeling or uh, particle effects or whatever, just feel free to ask, and I will put it on my list on things to do, because I want to try and make videos that you guys are interested in. Uh, thanks again for liking and commenting and subscribing. I really do appreciate all of your input and support. And thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Thank you.